Hello, this is Christelle Martinet, and it's, um, I guess, Thursday morning in, uh, in Rome. Thursday the whatever, um, let's see, the 19th, and we're coming up to the new moon weekend. But I wanted to scry, and uh, I'll post it to both channels. It's, uh, you know, for me, one o'clock in the morning is, is bewitching time and, and when uh, people should be sleeping and it's a really wonderful time. I've always, ever since I was a child, always had, um, I stayed up till one, two o'clock in the morning, just forced myself to stay up. And, um, and today I <laughs> slept so much during the day, I had to make up for, for yesterday. I, I went to bed late, really late. So what I'm going to do here is um, use the time and see what, what um, we can see. I, I have to thank you all very much. Thank you for all of those who have written to me uh, offering their help in um, getting this streaming session off the ground, the show. You know, a lot of people have talked about it as a show, and I really appreciate that. And um, I'll be working with that, and that will be coming up. I hope to get it off in the next three or four weeks, three, two, three weeks. Um, amethyst. Amethyst is one of the, like citrine, um, citrine for me works the best actually, but amethyst is also a very highly vibrational, you know, has a high vibration um, um, uh, gemstone crystal. as if the crystal is telling me, you can talk and talk and talk. But here we are, we're firmly planted with our feet here, you know? And, um, and, and I feel belittled compared to what I'm seeing, you know? There's, a, there's a, as if um, what I can see is, is, and what I can say actually is far, um, less important than what I'm seeing, so I'll try to do my best here. Um, I see an army, you know, an army, one of, of people, one after another, in uniform, and they're going all in a row, and as if they're all going into one direction. And it's refreshing this, it's, it's as if, you know, you, you when you listen to something and when you hear something when you see something if i'm i'm thinking of conformity being an a conformist or an anti-conformist there is sort of safety in numbers so when you see people um all doing the same thing there's sort of uh, the sensation that you're part of a group okay but then there's a, that anti-conformist feeling and that is also another group so in, in its anti-conformist way, you are conforming to a group. And this is what I'm, I'm seeing in this, um, in this amethyst, amethyst. Flanks, flanks of people. Singing the same song. I, I guess, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's only me, but uh, colleagues of mine, readers, other psychics, I've come, com I regularly communicate with, there is a feeling that things are changing. There is a, a perspective, a shift in a paradigm sh shift in spiritual terms. And that may be played out, the idea of a paradigm sh shift, but it's inevitable. I mean, it's not inevitable. It is very realistic, the idea of, of there being a paradigm shift and how, you know, we are all one, you know, and um, I don't say that lightly. And I don't, you know, someone wrote under my, my and I'd like to thank her, about rhetoric and um, everything we say, I'm exposing myself, everything I say is part of some kind of discourse. Her use of the word rhetoric, I would call it discourse, the discourse of psychics, the discourse of forgiveness, the discourse of, okay, it's a um, um, hegemonic uh, and a power, you know, 
the idea of power. So when there is a collective meaning about or around an abstract term, it does have, it, it gains in power. Now, um, this amethyst is uh, pointing in a direction of uniformity. And it has its positive side. But again, you know, every positive, you know, of course, um, hides a negative. And um, in one respect, I feel that, you know, Christelle Martinet, what are you trying to say tonight? I mean, you're here, and do you have any meaning or any message? Are you saying anything specific that people don't already know? You know, and I ask myself that, of course. What compels you to do this, you know? And I have to admit, it is the, the, the time of night, one past 1 a.m. in the morning. It's uh, almost 2 a.m. And uh, the, the idea of sneaking into the night and being able to um, uh, tune into the silence that's around you, I like that. I really like that. The citrine, where are you, citrine? The, um, the severe rigidity that uh, characterizes a crystal or that you can um, describe a, a crystal as being, you know, very severe, um, pointed, jagged uh, structures. Really, when you look at it in different shades of light, comes across as being so rounded and so smooth and so flexible and so malleable and so telling you know this is the the, the key is is the conversation and um the light really um jumps off of each other these these structures these these um reflections these surfaces that are uh that converse you know they converse and and um and they're saying you know it, it it's a very flat, uh, friendly banter tonight, um, uh, sort of saying, look, the, new, the, the full moons are coming up Saturday and Sunday. We have still Thursday. We have Friday. Who's afraid of the moon? Who's afraid of the full moon? And that will be the topic of this, um, the, the theme, the, 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 the title of, of my reading. Who's afraid of the full moon? 21st, 22nd of... Um, of May and you know I'm reminded it's the end of May my god it's the end of May it is not the end of May we have still many days before the end of May and um, and the different colors that are reflected don't seem that distinct because what is given off by uh, from the surfaces of these structures are, of course, it's light and it's reflected. And what I don't see is the different colors. You know, it's as if you, you, you're seeing a crowd and you see black people, are yellow people, pink people, red people, and you don't see them as different. And this is what I'm seeing with this crystal, um, which is nice. It's a, it's a message of unity, of con not of conformity, but of um, oneness. Okay, fine. And this is a rhetoric of oneness, you know, for, for those subscribers that um, talk in linguistic terms. And um, even the notion of rhetoric um, in, in the English language today, rhetoric has almost taken on a negative connotation um, if we remove it from uh, the Greeks and, um, and the idea of classical rhetoric what I would call discourse, the discourse of politicians, the discourse of power, the discourse of, of, um, of volunteer work, the discourse, th that uh, section of language that is grouped together to uh, perform a function. 
And uh, here I'm seeing the crystal is, is performing the function of reflecting, reflecting light from different colored surfaces. And the reflection is the same because the light is light, whether it is reflected from the dark parts, whether it's reflected from the light parts. The citrine is characterized by very dark yellow, almost, sm it looks like smoky quartz, and it is, you know, um, um, I was, I spent a lot of time with um, a shop owner in Rome who was um, describing the um, a stone, a gem that I was uh, interested in, and he told me that it was, it began as um, amethyst, but then within time the amethyst does change color, and what we see is something that looks like smoky quartz. And what I see here is, is, is smoky quartz, and then almost as if it were crystal quartz, crystal clear, you know, there's very many different shades, at least 10. And, um, but that's not the difference that I'm seeing. I'm seeing the reflection and the light is, is the same for all the colors, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, um, I get that question again today, more than other days, why, why, you know, why, why some days you feel the, the, the urgent need to communicate and why other days you don't. Are we moved by a sense of communication, pure and simple, or are we moved by, um, the need to understand. Today I spoke to a woman who, who um, and if you recognize yourself in this, what I'm saying, please don't take it as, as me singling you out. But she was saying to me, you know, I came to you because I was wondering, is that all there is? You know, is, is that all there is? You know, and that you can, you can project into many different things. Um, very simply, you go to bed with someone and you have a wonderful, uh, emotional, passionate, session and in the end you get up and you say is that all there is is there something more you know and then you start to look under the surface and you start to think well that's when our spirituality comes up um, perhaps and um, I found myself saying to this person um, jokingly this colleague of mine over you know the last couple of months has said to me you know spirituality is something that older people uh, get in contact with because as you you know progress towards the end of your life you latch on to or you describe the end of your days in spiritual terms in order for you to prepare you know well I think it's a little more than that because I'm, I'm reminded of moments when we um, for example the, the, the my children okay they, they grew up and in a um, public Italian school environment and where everyone takes communion and and confirmation in the Catholic religion and it just didn't go down with my uh, family okay and um, the nucleus and and uh, the father of the children and it was difficult that it was really difficult why was that difficult it was difficult because a latched on to that was in the eyes of a 10 year old, the, the parties around the event and the gifts that were given as part of that. And it was difficult for me to understand, you know, to, to communicate that to, to my son at the time. Whereas one son just took it in strides, didn't, didn't care. The next though, the second son was, had the question, why, why, you know, and um, then as t years went by, he found his own form of spirituality and, um, but I really felt hard pressed to offer him a tool, you know, to, to, to tell him, okay, it's not only the gifts, it's not, but it was difficult at the moment. And, and I guess that is the, the, the brunt of, uh, of conditioning, of traditions, and uh, what is it that brings us to a communion of, of meanings. You know, why are we in this temple? Why are we uh, together? Why do we break bread? Why am I clicking my glass, clinking my glass, chin chin, you know, why am I raising my glass with you? Is it because the spirituality of communion brings us to rejoice in being together, you know? 
And we can you know, transpose that, those ideas to every walk of life, everything. You, know, you go to the library and you're looking for a book on politics and um, the history of the, um, uh, the, 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 the Mason Lodges in um, Italy. Okay, You go and you look for a book and, and there's a process whereby you go and there are numbers and you can use the computer or you can go to the, it depends on where the library is. And all through that process, there are connections that you have with the people in front of you, the librarians, the, the other people in the library with whom you discuss things. Every moment of that time can be described in a spiritual way. I prefer going to the library instead of looking at things online because I can make contact with a person who's around 70 years old in the library of that little town who will give me access to their take on how it was then. You know, there's many different facets to that. And uh, then the notion of spirituality takes on a completely different idea. You know, what is spirituality then? And I'm, I'm, I'm bringing, I'm trying to listen to myself and I'm trying to think that it probably really is the idea that we are related, we are, you know, linked to other people. There is that person who writes under my video and says, hey, you know, I usually follow you and I really agree with you, but this time I don't agree with you. Oh, okay, that's fine. That, thank you. They look, they watched, you know, I'm very thankful because I got some feedback. Or, look, you know, just... If I may, do you think that this probably, you know, and it's, it's contact, it's contact. And, um, and of course, um, we all do uh, recoil into our uh, separate little cages that we create for ourselves and the prisons that we um, uh, build for ourselves. And, um, but at the same time, we look out those windows and we see that there is a world beyond those cages that we create for ourselves. And it depends on how far you look out and how, you know, how big those windows are. Um, and that is a measure of what your level of spirituality will allow you in those moments, you know. And I hate to, um, I'm thinking, you know, I, I have to say, that as I'm talking, I can see that I'm measuring, I'm talking, I'm drawing, I'm widening, and I'm, you know, so so it's it's tangible. It seems as if my description and my words are um, distinguishing something that you could touch. Instead, you know, oh, if you talk about the English language, the other day I was talking to a group of people, young people who were um, who have notoriously. In this country, in many, you know, in almost all countries, if you work with the English language, I, I always say, you know, you could die before you understand how to use the article a, an, and the for the English language. If you're a foreign uh, speaker of another language, if you have to study the English language, a, an, and the, you could die uh, before you understand how to use the prepositions and how to use the, the articles. And we came to the uh, notion of abstract nouns, love, um, charity, uh, peace. You know, you wouldn't say the peace, the love. And so it's just an abstract. And, and the idea of abstract is so understandable. And it was easy, easy for me to explain that to them. And here too, bringing it back to, to us, spirituality. And you would never say the spirituality because it's such an abstract, almost as if it's a universal concept when in truth it's not because you can talk to 10 people around you as you walk down your street down your block the people in your office the people that uh, you see every day and they won't know what it means for them that word spirituality and um and that's okay you know it doesn't matter because we're pragmatic human beings we're here in a third uh, uh, dimension and uh, where we're um, doing our paying our bills here and that's okay but some of us like to talk and understand you know and um, then 
this takes me back to the woman I spoke to today uh, who said to me, is that all there is? You know, is that all there is? And when you go a little bit beyond that and you look at all the lights that's refracted from one side of this citrine to the other and you see that it's light and it's not black and brown and yellow and white and it is light, you start to ask yourself, what is that light? That light is in relation to the darkness. You know that the darkness, if you're understanding the darkness, it was, you know, um, I'm going to free my hands because um, a very important um, notion came up the other day uh, when I was talking to some, some colleagues, other psychics and readers, and we were discussing the notion of trying to get to the root of something. And they said, well, you really have to know, understand um, the dark side, the shadow side, in order for, for you to get a reflection of, of the light. And um, out of darkness comes light. It's, it's, you know, they are two sides to the same coin. And that, ladies and gentlemen, for me, is the essence of my sanity. If I can be reminded daily, day in and day out, that to every bright side there's the dark side and that they work one next to the other, I can accept just about anything, you know. And um, it's interesting, this, because... Um, I hear over and over again, even people who read for me, they say, you have to keep your boundaries up. You have to keep your boundaries up. You have to keep those, you know, the, the points are coming up. You have to keep it up because you need to, to define your boundaries in terms of then interacting with others. And it's a very difficult concept, this putting up your boundaries and then interacting with others. That is really, really difficult for many of us. Um, I like the idea, I'm going to change crystals, I like the idea of, um, this is one of my favorite, this ferris, um, I like the idea of refracted light on a very dark basis like this, or, oops, I'm sorry, this is a very heavy one, my god, this is the heaviest crystal I have, heaviest gem. It has a beautiful felt star. I'll see if I can get that for you. There, it's beautiful there. Um, I like the notion of something so, so dark that nonetheless allows you penetration and allows you to see and, and receive uh, visions here. And this is a very, very uh, mysterious, mysterious gem, a mysterious uh, crystal that has... Um, a sort of a kind of uh, message that w w if you scry, you know, when I scry, when I look at this, when I watch it, when I um, look and, and, and ask, you know, because I, I ask, well, you know, tell me, talk, you know, um, you know what, what, what is it? What is it? Come on, tell me. And oftentimes I put it aside because I'm thinking, no, it doesn't want to talk. It's mute. Instead, it's as if I have to train my eyes to look differently at this because it's not the same as that. It's different. And you need to look at every individual differently because the properties are different. You can't use the same eyes to see different things, you know. But then again, we ask ourselves, but I only have these eyes. Well, the eyes can be trained and the eyes can, you know, uh, eyes are very tricky. The sight is very tricky. If I, you know, I always used to say, if I could be born again, I would like to be a lawyer. I feel that my, that's my, that's where I would uh, really spend my best um, qualities. But then another is um, an optician or someone who works with the eyes because I think it's fascinating how vision changes um, constantly. Uh, it's really, really interesting. And if, if I put these two together, I will not get the same messages, but what I do get is a conversation. And the conversation here talks of... Um, it's as if I were looking at the Colosseum. You know, you have the archways. Imagine that, the Colosseum, where 
you look and there's a certain part under those archways that's darker because you're at a distance. And so that's the unknown. But you can come close to each and every one of them. And then as you come close, their darkness is a little more illuminated. This is what I'm seeing. The closer you get, the more, the lighter it becomes. The closer I get to the Feldstar with the crystal quartz next to it, the lighter it becomes. There's a unique quality in, um, in the way we explain, in the way that we um, describe, and in the way that we actually see. I, I think it's just a quality of seeing that um, I, I have to uh, believe, I, I really do have to say that the quality is, it shifts constantly, but the quality, if you can adapt your descriptions to what you're seeing, and you have to really slip and slide, shift quickly, you will, you'll be rewarded because what you see is constantly changing. And if you can embrace that change and be malleable enough to see that, but what's coming out of my mouth now is to maintain the hope of the newly emerging images I feel that what you'll be able to see will be surprising and it will surprise you. I think I'm going to have to stop at that and try to get to bed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, namaste. Uh, pleasure for me to work with you. I'm uh, putting this um, out both in my uh, YouTube channel called Mystic Scrying Medium Cristel and my uh, Cristel Martinet YouTube channel. And again, thank you for all of you who have written to me concerning the um, uh, trying to go screaming, screaming, <laughs> streaming in a couple of weeks. I really appreciate your help. Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. Till I scry again.